What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a quick trading update, talking about what I'm personally in, in terms of swing trades. Did I day trade today? We're going to be talking about that in today's video, as well as talking about some stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching here heading into the end of April and into the May month of 2019. So before we do get into this, guys, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you enjoy the content that I'm putting out here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit that like button, guys. It really does support me and supports the channel in general, and I really do appreciate every single one of you guys out there watching the videos, subscribing subscribing to the content, hitting that like button. It really does mean a lot to me. And without further ado, let's hop into it. What ended up happening today in the stock market? So the S&P 500, also known as the SPX, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies ended up having a very boring day down about a dollar and eight cents, down about 0.04 percent. Nothing more than just a consolidation day here in the S&P 500. The Dow Jones Industrial Average guys actually had a pretty bad day, down about 135 points, down about 0.5 percent and this is mostly due to the company 3m ticker symbol mmm doing very very poorly today and if we hop over here 3M, they were down quite a bit today. I think they were down a bit more than this at their low, but they were down 13% nearly at the close, down about 30 bucks. Very bad day for 3M. That didn't do too well for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So if we're hopping here to the NASDAQ, guys, we can see a pretty solid pullback day, down about 51 points right now, down about 0.66%. And Honestly, based on these technicals, guys, the uptrend is still intact for the NASDAQ. We're still maintaining um, this 50 SMA support. Everything is still looking pretty solid. So if we're just going back to the SPX very quickly so we can do a brief rundown of, of what I'm looking at here. Again, it was just briefly a consolidation day. We can see on the five-day, five-minute chart, you know, ever since we hit that 2936 level, I believe this was on, what was this on, uh, Tuesday, right? We had that very big gap up day from that slow day on Monday, right? We popped up on Tuesday, we gapped up. We've been seeing a resistance roughly at about 2935. We topped off there. We kind of had a triple top here on that day. The next day we popped up again, tested that resistance, got rejected. We had quite a big, uh, a bit of a red day Day this morning, the SPX sold off. I believe we were down about you know 10 15 points at one point this morning, and then we ended up popping up pretty aggressively. Got topped off roughly at about 29.33, the resistance from yesterday near the market close, and that's pretty much where we've been hovering, right? So, as of now, it seems like we're still trading in between that channel, the horizontal channel that I was talking about in yesterday's video, between 29.26 ish, right around here, and about about 29.36. So that is what I'm looking at right now in terms of the S&P 500, guys. A bit of consolidation. Where are we going to go now, though, right? If we start to pull back a bit, the support that I'm going to be watching is a previous resistance from back in August of 2018, roughly at about 29.15. So if we were to pull back again tomorrow, that is the level I'm going to be looking at in terms of holding above for the S&P 500. 500, but this can just be a consolidation zone before we end up popping up to higher highs and potentially, you know, hitting those all time highs. So let's say we have a ridiculous green day tomorrow, which is very possible, right? The SPX can be at all time highs before we know, guys. So that is what I'm looking at here in terms of the S&P 500. Back over here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, nothing crazy, not much change. This pullback is simply bringing us to that support at about 26 400 that we can clearly see and that I've been talking about here on the channel over the past couple of videos. So it does seem like 
Yesterday we popped up, or not yesterday, it was a bit earlier this week. We popped up, we tested near that resistance at about 26,800. Not quite there, it was more around 26,700, but right around that level. And from there we pulled back, and right now it seems like we're just sitting on that support at 26,400. So, you know, the, the, the gist of this is just we're simply trading in between the horizontal channel, that 400 point buffer from 26400 up to about 26800 and I'm heavily watching the support level tomorrow if we break that the next one we're going to be looking at is 26200 let's see if we hold above it and we start to trend back up towards the middle of the channel are we going to retest that 26700 level are we going to pop up the 26800 if we break that level that is going to be what we need to see to test all time highs here in the Dow Jones Industrial Average so hopping over here to the NASDAQ, not much to say, right? We've been talking about how the NASDAQ has been hitting all-time highs day in and day out over these past couple of trading days. Today, we saw a bit of a pullback, which honestly... I was expecting, right? I wasn't really expecting the NASDAQ to continue to break all-time highs day in and day out. Everything that's popping up aggressively, right, day in and day out, it needs a healthy correction, a healthy pullback. And this is what really I'm viewing in terms of the NASDAQ, right? This is what I'm seeing here. We hit the all-time high at 78, 79, and now we're just pulling back. So what in terms of support levels am I watching for the NASDAQ to see, okay, where are we going to potentially pull back and bounce to well I'm going to be watching this old all-time high resistance which is now a new support since we broke above it which is roughly at about 7710 that is a support level I'm watching as well as this 50 SMA here on the NASDAQ if we pull back a bit more this could be a level right the moving average where we can hold above it and possibly continue the uptrend but let's say we break that which has been a support over the past couple of months that could be a sign that we're going to see an even further correction on that on the nasdaq and the 180 sma could be the support we're heading to at that point in time so that's the overall market update right now guys nothing crazy in terms of the spx a little bit more movement in the nasdaq and the dow but overall i consider this you know a bit of a pullback a little bit of a red day before we potentially test those all-time highs in the dow jones and the s p 500 so let's talk about what i am doing right now in terms of my trading so i'm still in process Procter and Gamble, not much of an update on this stock. I'm just basically holding on to my position since we are maintaining the 180 SMA support here on the 184 hour chart. Not much of an update. I'm just simply holding on to the shares that I bought a couple of days ago, the day of their earnings report. And I do plan on adding more money once and if we break above $105. And if we break below the 180 SMA, let's say we start to creep to the 101 range, maybe 100 range, that might be an area that I'm going to be cutting my losses. So that's just a quick little rundown for those of you guys that didn't know i'm just simply holding my procter and gamble shares right now nothing crazy so facebook is one that i actually started to buy in on my swing trading account very lightly here today so facebook we all know they reported earnings yesterday they did pretty well in terms of their eps in terms of their revenue their daily active users their monthly active users everything is looking pretty solid in terms of facebook and the market you guys can see here reacted very nice right the stock was up to $202 per share uh, after market hours yesterday this was during the conference call the stock went up to this high here and we saw a bit of a pullback here today guys and the level that we are currently at is 192 to 193 which just happens to be a level of support from back in the June month of 2018 take a look at this so Facebook back almost a year ago at this point was at $202 per share which just happens to be the price where we hit 
pre-market or rather after-market hours yesterday. We got rejected at that point, and now we're trending towards the support from back towards the end of June. So we're pretty much just trading in this exact channel from back almost a year ago now from 202, 203 resistance to 192, 193 support. So I pretty much got into this on my swing account, right, on roughly about 193.50, 194 on the little... Uh, we had a couple double bottoms or a couple bottoms rather at that level, but we can see now after hours, Facebook's actually trending back into the 192s, but we can see from that support from a couple of months back, almost a year back now, we ended up bottoming there once today, twice three times, four times, and five times after market hours. And I guess technically we're still at that level right now. So I ended up just building a little position here roughly at about 1120-ish, at about 193.55, 193.60, something like that, right? And I'm planning on swinging these shares here over the next couple of weeks. And I do plan on adding more money into Facebook as it continues to push up, let's say into the 196, 197 level, that is where I'm planning on adding more money. And once we break, if we break out of that resistance at around 202, 203, that could be a point in time where I'm going to be adding more money as well. So I'm viewing this more as a longer term swing play. I personally think the earnings report was very solid. We're seeing a bunch of big name, um, you know, banks, analysts out there. They're raising their price target on Facebook. A lot of positive uh, sentiment, optimism around Facebook right now. I think this is making for a pretty good um, swing trade right now. So in terms of swing trades, I'm in Procter & Gamble right now, and Facebook stock. And I'm planning on selling Facebook probably above the 202 range. I might take profits, and if we hold that level, I might add some more. It's still up in the air right now, but I'm building my position at 193, planning on adding more around 196, 197. That is the goal right now. And what did I do in terms of day trading today? I actually ended up trading very briefly a very tiny profit on Gush, guys. And Gush is one that I think some of you guys were talking about this morning in the group chat. I called it out earlier on today throughout the day, but it ended up being a pretty solid play. And if we're going over here to Gush, for those of you guys that don't know, this is another one of those inverse ETFs, right? Inverse ETFs, it trades based upon XO. P. Whenever XOP is going up in price, Gush is going up in price. And this was probably like one of my smaller day trades, to be completely honest with you guys. I didn't even get 1% on this trade, but I still wanted to mention it here on this video. So we can see this was simply a gap fill play on Gush. So we got that sell off this morning from about 1280 down to about 1218. We got the double bottom here. It was honestly a triple bottom. And once we started to reverse back up, we broke out of the 1237 resistance from a couple of minutes ago here. That is when I started to hop into Gush and I started to ride it up on the gap fill. And it was a pretty nice little, um, I guess you can say like a cup pattern here, a little horseshoe. This is kind of like a, a cup and handle, right? The cup here, the handle, right? And then we started to sell off from there. But honestly, I got in on the break of this 1238 resistance here, ended up riding it up a very small amount literally less than 1% here guys up to about 1255 ish and that's where I ended up taking my profits on gush and this is actually an ETF that I'm keeping my eyes on for these next couple of days because if we're hopping over here to the 20 day one hour chart although we did break the 180 simple moving average support here which is kind of worrisome we're still maintaining an overall uptrend here on gush so if XOP tomorrow does end up rallying recovering gush can be a very good bounce back play possibly for a big gain tomorrow or next week which is kind of segueing into what i'm watching in terms of etfs
ETFs and stocks, guys. So ETFs, definitely Gush and XOP. If we're hopping over here to another stock I'm watching, which is one that we talked about a couple of videos ago. It might have been on Sunday's video. Let me take a look at the sheet. Uh, nope, I don't think I mentioned it on Sunday's video, but I mentioned it a couple of videos ago. I don't remember which one, but it was Ford stock, Ford Motor Motor Company. And we were talking about this one and I was saying once Ford broke out of 950, that was going to be a pretty good telltale sign to swing trade Ford. So we can see here, guys, the big green candlestick. They obviously just reported good earnings, which popped the stock not only above that 950 level that I was waiting for, but it seems like it's popping us out of the $10 resistance, which is the next point that we wanted to see break uh, a break for Ford, right? So the goal initially was for me to trade Ford between $9.50 and $10. But now that we broke out of both of those levels, I want to see, are we going to just maintain the general $10 area for Ford? Is this going to happen? You know, if we do end up maintaining 10 guys, this can be a good sign that we're slowly going to start swinging back up, maybe to the $10.50 level, maybe to the $10.75, $11 level. This is a very good sign for Ford. So if we just hop in to the live news tab so we can just see a brief earnings per share and sales estimate or uh, overview rather, we can see their adjusted EPS was 44 cents, beat the 26 cent estimate guys i think that was roughly off the top of my head that's like a 60 percent beat guys so that has a bunch of people out there in the market super excited the sales were a bit of a small beat here but nonetheless still a beat at 37.24 billion that beat the 3708 billion estimate and let me just pull up this article on my phone very quickly if i can see it here um Actually, I think it, it, it went away, but they did very well, I believe, on in one of the U in the U.S. market on their overall Ford, um, one of their pickup truck lines. I forget, but that you know was very well or very good for Ford. And this is a company that I honestly, I'm not going to sit here on the camera and say that I know a lot about Ford, but it's a company now that is one that I want to research a bit deeper guys you know this earnings per share beat was pretty good in my eyes and now I want to dive in a bit deeper on Ford look into it a bit deeper in terms of their earnings to see what I'm going to do in terms of my swing trade here so based on the brief numbers EPS revenue everything's looking solid we're breaking some resistance levels some technical spots here I just want to see are we going to maintain ten dollars as a new support tomorrow or if we pull back under ten dollars you you know, we might start to get closer to the 970 level that can open up a nice entry point in my opinion here on a positive earnings report. So Ford is probably the number one at this point stock that I am watching tomorrow along with Facebook. Those are my top two and Procter and Gamble. Those are my top three in terms of stocks. Gush is the ETF that I'm watching. If we're going over here to Apple stock very quickly, we're starting to see a bit of a retracement here in Apple stock right we topped that about 208 we're pulling back now well into the 204 30 range now uh, uh, after market hours we're pulling back pretty aggressively here so this could potentially open up a little swing opportunity if and big if here if we end up maintaining this 180 SMA support and mind you guys the earnings reports coming up on the 30th so take that into account in terms of Apple if you feel comfortable holding through earnings that's your decision you know you can hop in on this this little bounce on the 180 SMA. I think that's a pretty good entry point. But for me personally, I'm probably going to wait until after earnings unless we get um, a, a change here. Probably though, most likely 95% that I am going to wait until after earnings to see how the earnings was, the guidance, quarter over quarter growth, year over year, stuff like that before making my decision. But I figured I'd still talk about it because it is pulling back a bit here. 
you know, potentially opening up a nice little swing opportunity. So Apple, ticker symbol AA. PL guys on the 184 hour we can see it's close to that 50 simple moving average support which very obvious uh, very obvious here it's been a support over the past couple of months this is a critical spot for Apple we're getting close to that point in time where we might bounce we might reverse we might start to push back up so another one that I'm watching in terms of stocks guys is V ticker symbol V Visa Inc they reported their earnings yesterday if I remember correctly they beat on EPS and revenue the stock is maintaining the 50 simple moving average support here on the 184 hour chart we're trading at about $160.85 here after market hours a brief margin of profit up to the previous high at about 163.50 so this in my opinion is open up for not a crazy amount of profit on a swing trade but a pretty solid amount here if you want to play the little pullback and the little bounce here on a decent positive earnings report from visa so this is one worth keeping an eye on in my opinion and let's just hop over here to amazon see what they're doing right now because they did just report earnings i didn't have time quite yet to digest their earnings report but let's see what they're doing after market hours before i do end off this video so that's a pretty big pop up to 1970 now we're selling off to about 1897 so that's quite a volatile move there on amazon that's about an 100 point swing in the matter of an hour since they reported earnings and i actually didn't look at their earnings quite yet guys i'm going to look at it after i record this video but let's see where we are right now so amazon sees sales of 59.5 billion to 63.5 versus 62 billion estimate operating income oh this is what we want to see amazon eps okay they beat on sales that's pretty good there okay so they beat on sales i'm not getting quite uh what their eps is but nonetheless i'm going to take a look at that after i record or finish recording this video but it seems like amazon stock is falling to the 1800 dollars level what do you guys think about amazon is this one that you're currently invested in are you going to buy more are you waiting for a pullback i would love to know but the key takeaway in my opinion and one of the hottest ones from this list for tomorrow and for the next couple of weeks is Ford, guys. Ford stock, this is one that's just been pummeled over the past couple of months. They have a fat dividend on there. You know, this could be an interesting play over the next couple of months. You know, what are your thoughts on that? I would love to know. Drop a comment down below. But for now, that's the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop that like button. It really does support me and supports the channel in general and i do appreciate every single one of you guys that do that does like these videos it means a lot to me if you're new to the channel and you're not subscribed yet what are you doing hit that red button subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that i do make a video i'll catch you all in the next video we'll chat in the group chat tonight i'm sure i'll see you all good luck tomorrow enjoy the rest of your night peace out